Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku became the centerpiece of a sinister game. If you guys enjoy this movie comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story The Queen of Bubbles of Time from Fanfiction.net. So let's start the video. Come on, it can be super fun. We all played games like this as kids, why not relive the glory days? I mean, we practically live in the biggest amusement park in the world. What's stopping us? exclaimed Class 1A's self-proclaimed queen of aliens, Mina Ashido, as she and her group of gal pals. They were, however, met with a chorus of unsure A's or were flat out ignored by many of the more stoic and self-reserved classmates. With the exception of everyone's favorite serial grapist and human Pichu who saw this as an opportunity to run into the class beauties under romantic moonlight. Minda couldn't even tell there was drool rushing from his mouth as his mind was running. Just thinking about it, this is it. One of the ladies will find me cornered. Nowhere to run and their primal instincts will kick in. I'll be their willing prey. No doubt they'll take me back to their dorms in private. And once we do, I'll be getting the deluxe treatment of getting eaten in the best way possible. Surely the ladies are using this as an excuse to get me alone. And the second they see this stunning face under the moon, I'll be on a one-way trip to Smoochville. Population, me. Kaminari smirked to himself as he thought about all the situations he will find himself in. To the girls, however, they did not really care if all of class joined, or even a small handful. All that mattered to them was that they hoped their secret green-haired trophy will agree to it. It would be ludicrous to not see that at this point in time. Each one had a personal motive to claiming that green field for their future farm. And as one would expect it, I think that sounds fun. A certain cinnamon roll with mint icing on top exclaimed, a gleam in his eyes. Hook, line and sinker. Izuku didn't have the heart to tell them that he did not ever get to actually play games like that much as a kid due to his past. So the moment he saw an opportunity to have some childish fun, he is going to run with it. Is it going to be like freeze tack? What are the rules? Will there be any sort of reward if the ones who are hiding stay hidden if the seekers give up? What about? He trailed on. That damn cuteness is what they needed for their plan to work perfectly. Kaiyu Kajiru. One of the edgiest looking girls this side of a Tokyo in a living ox core had to poke his forehead with one of her jacks. Down, greeny, heel. You're gonna talk your voice box broke. Oh, you're gonna be healing tonight once I find you. Mistress Jiru. That has a nice ring to it. Well if the nerd is in, you can double count me out. No way am I going to play some stupid FC King Kids game when I have better things to do with my time in the first place. Katsuki Bakugo, Mr. Splody Boom Boom Man himself, spat out angrily as the mere thought of doing anything that involved his one-sided frenemy sent his breakfast running to the porcelain throne. Ijiru Kirishima and Hantasiro, the elving boulder with a boner and office max mascot respectively, knew the perfect way to get their friend interested as Kirishima put his hand on Bakugo's shoulder. Come on, you're really going to pass up an excuse to prove you're the best at hiding. Yeah, just think about it. Good heroes are able to be silent enough to sneak up on their enemies and strike. You'll be proving you can do that without the striking part. Siro hoped both he will agree. And his squad leader won't actually end up striking someone in the face. G R R R R R A A A A. Fine. I'll play your stupid FC King game. Just shut up about it. Katsuki screamed out as he made a small explosion in his hand to get them away. The invisible man's secret love child if Todoroki's theory is correct, Toru Hagakir, could not help but squeal in glee in her mind. This is going great. The more the merrier, the less likely the plan will be found out. Bushy boy won't even realize I'll be hot on his trail. Absolutely not. Under no circumstances shall we jeopardize a routine sleep schedule in order to play a childish game. A certain blue-haired possible robot in a man's suit, Tenya Ida, stood up from his chair as he chopped the air in the direction of his fellow female classmate. Shit, he could ruin my plan to make Midoriya my future consort. Momo Yeyurazu, the human-sized living factory, yelled in her mind. Do not worry, Ida, think of this as a sort of training. After all, pro heroes must both be skilled in stealth as well as search. You do not want to risk the situation of a missing person incident during a rescue, do you? She silently prayed, take the bait, take the bait. Tenya stopped for a moment to think. Very well. I assume you all have thought out a proper procedure in order for both maximum. Fun, as well as experience. You may count me in. The living Katy Perry song, Shout O Todoroki, was next to speak. If I may ask, why exactly have you planned out this little festive event? I can tell by your movements there is something much more to it than simply reliving old day. Not that he would have had any of those days either thanks to his life. Luckily for the girls, the girl with a set of thighs that could crush a melon, Suyu Asui, walked in front and said quite bluntly, We've been going through so much stuff lately from the USJ incident, to the League of Villains and the stress of the festivals that we could use something to ease the stress, Kiro. It might have been her blank stare or her tone of voice, 
but that was somehow a good enough reason for Todoroki to sit down and accept the game offer. One by one, the guys have agreed to joining the game with three exceptions. That being Takoyami, Ayama, and, surprisingly, Koda. The reverse harpy backed out since darkness is not a good idea for him and his quirk as everyone's safety will surely be in question. The living disco ball refused to join as it would be like if he had a glowing neon sign on his back that said I glow. Find me first and the man that would make Steve Irwin proud declined as all the night bugs would surely give him a one-way ticket to the nurse from the heart attack. The girl that looked like a human Kirby, Achako Yuraraka, clasped her hands together as she went to her stand next to her green-haired best friend and maybe more later on, slightly nudging him with her thigh on purpose much to the secret disdain of the other girls with her iconic big smile plastered on her face. Great, we're gonna meet up at Ground Omega around 10pm sharp. Be sure to get your work done beforehand so we don't need to worry about it. She latched herself onto Izuku's arm as he couldn't help but blush and mumble incoherently. Come on, Deku, we don't want to be late for class. She practically floated him to their class as she held him down by his arm, as if she was showing off her prize before the game even began. Soon the common room was getting emptier by the person, leaving the girls in the back of the crowd with their thoughts. I swear, if I wasn't going to be a hero, I would have her head on a personal made spear in our front lawn. I can bust one of her eardrums and she won't die, right? You're gonna burn, sweetie, but not by fire. Hope you like being bald. I just need one moment alone with her. My mucus would put her out of commission silently and safely. Just a bit of it and she'll be paralyzed long enough for me to get on that lily pad and finish school in one fell swoop, Kiro. Oh, he is going to love the little trick I'll do the second I get him in my bed. I'll call it hiding the python. Yeah, python. She could not help but recall the time she hid in the guy's shower long enough to see what exactly she'll be hiding later. Thank goodness she is invisible. Otherwise things would be awkward if anyone looked at her right then and there and possibly result in expulsion and, or make her be forced to go door to door telling people that she's a registered you know what. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
a twig being snapped below him. As Izuku heard the snap, all color seemed to have faded from his face as the horrible realization of his breath giving away his location. Shaking, he peered down to the ground, expecting either a woman climbing up the tree to get him or worse, a group of them. Luckily, fate was on his side. The older brother of the great Captain Diabetes, Rikidu Sato, had stepped on a few twigs as he rested himself against a tree after running for a solid minute or two at full sprint. Surely after this, he'll be needing a full buffet from the stress of this stress reliever. Izuku let out a loud whisper, Sato, up here. At first, he wasn't able to be heard, so he resulted to throwing down pieces of bark to hopefully get his attention. Sato looked up just as a piece was falling, as it landed right in his eye. First of all, oh, secondly, Midoriya, is that you? You're looking pale, like you've seen a ghost. Midoriya climbed down to the possible illusion of safety. Rikidu, thank goodness it was you. Listen, something doesn't seem right. The girls have been weirding me out today, more so than normal. He put his hand to his chin to think. First was Achako during the morning. And during class many of them just seemed out of it for some reason. Really, I haven't noticed anything. They seem like the same old same old girls. Sato looked around and then at his phone to keep track of time. It's been a few minutes. Come on, we need to get back to hiding. Hey, maybe the big prize if we win is a full course meal cooked by the ladies. Izuku looked up at his tree. Since he climbed up and down a few times now, many branches were scattered across the ground thanks to his movements. Why yeah, agreed. Any idea where the rest are? Sato shook his head. Nope, that's the whole point, remember? Gotta stay hidden. Lucky for you it was me that was under you. You might have been caught by now. If only Rikidu knew how much that actually mattered. The green-haired teen nodded at his sweet-toothed friend. I, I get it. Well, good luck on hiding, hope we win. He had a shaky smile as he activated full cowling in order to get some more distance in case anyone heard them. Rikidu watched as the class cinnamon roll went off in the distance as he looked around for something to hide it. Now where is a good spot for me to G? He felt a small sting on his neck as he tried to reach for the source. What was that? I'm feeling kinda. He fell to his knees with a semi-loud thud as he stopped moving and started snoring out of the bushes. A tall girl in red stepped out with a small dart gun in her hand. Momo mildly cursed under her breath. Shit, I spent too much time keeping my cover, I zoned out. She went to her sleeping classmate and pulled a small dart. Sorry, Sato, didn't mean to hit ya, that shot was meant for him. She checked the rounds and seen there was only two darts left. A little bit of a delay, but mark my words, Izuku, you're sleeping on satin tonight. A few hours earlier, in Kaiyuka's room, Mina slammed a pillow in her face as she began to whine. Yamomo should have been here by now. What's taking so damn long? She resulted to banging the floor like an impatient child as the other girls either ignored her or tried to comfort her. Relax, if this plan is working like it seems to, she'll have them and is on her way. Jiru said as she sat there, twirling her jack in between her fingers. In fact, I can hear her right now. Momo opened the door and quickly shut in behind her as she proceeded to take out a small vial of odd purple liquid from within her pocket labeled Midnight Number no. 5 and put it on Kayuka's desk. Ladies, gather around. Hiroraka kneeled beside the desk as she was now eye-level with the vial, mouth agape in amazement. You actually got it. How did you? She looked a bit nervous to ask as she was unsure of what possible extents her frenemy may have went though to get it. And Miss Midnight wasn't hurt by any chance, W was she. Momo felt Abbott attacked by that statement. Of course not, Uraraka. We aren't monsters. I just asked her what her gas was made of a few days ago and had a little help from the chemistry department to recreate it in a liquid form. I told them it was for science experiment. Luckily with my status, they believed it. She proceeded to make several small darts from her palms, exactly 18, and six small handgun-sized dart guns. Toru cheered. I can't believe we actually got it. So, about the plan. Mind filling me in again. I zoned out pre-TTY badly last time. She took one of the dart guns and struck a few poses, semi-zoning out again, resulting in her getting tongue smacked by Tsuyu. Tsuyu, Abbott nervous that she was actually holding one of the guns in her hands, was the one to speak. We have one chance and three shots each. If any of us find Izuku, Kiro, they're allowed to either tell him their feelings then and there or dart him. If you can make it out of the playing field without the others finding out, you win. Just know, we can still use the remaining darts to put any of the others to sleep. No one gets immunity just because they found him first, Kiro. Momo had an oddly enthusiastic smile. She had her reasonings to wanting to make Izuku be hers. Ever since their little mission to save Bakugo from the League, she was enamored by Izuku's dedication to save a life of someone who was admittedly one-sidedly close to him, even while still recovering. If that's where the friendship love line was at, she could only imagine where the romantic one was. Not only that, Izuku had many desirable traits that she was witness to, such as his hard work and dedication, his physique and mind, 
not to mention the fact she found him downright adorable with all his little shy antics. If there wasn't a bigger picture the day she, Izuku and a few more of their classmates went out to save Bakugo, she would have swept the green-haired shorty into her bosom after his little stealth mode pose. She regained composure. All right, everyone get ready. We got a game to play. She looked down at the gun as she loaded the darts in. Izuku-kun, you and me, we're gonna be living it up when we're pros. I can see the baby now. The imagine of a small green-haired child with a ponytail haircut making her own toys appeared in her mind. The kid was sitting on her daddy's lap after a long day of heroing as Momo saw a much older version of herself making a hearty meal for her number one green bean. After dinner, her hubby would sweep her off her feet and toss her on a bed fit for the number one and number two heroes as they began to get ready for bed. Her man Doria would pull her close into him, wrap his strong scarred arms around her and whisper sweet words into her ear as she felt her PJ shorts slowly get taken off and Yo, Earth to Momo. Kailuka was snapping her fingers in front of her tall friend's face, breaking her from her trance. The other girls already left to get ready as Yairazu was the last one in Jiru's room. You gonna head out, or? Momo shook her head, eh sorry. See you later, KJ. She left Jiru's room to get ready in her own room, just before she proceeded to take care of a small feeling in her lower areas. Back in Omega, Momo sighed as she saw her prize dart off. Satin sheets, Midoriya, satin sheets. All across the field, the other girls were having similar problems of either missing the wild sheep their eyes were set on or hitting other classmates as they thought it was Midoriya under the night lights. As it neared the hour mark, many of their classmates were nothing more than a bunch of sleepheads at the front doors of Omega's walls. The only ones that weren't sleeping and were still in the forest were the last three, Minta, Ajiro, and him. Speaking of him, Midoriya had never stopped running the moment he left Sato back there. As he approached his exhaustion point, he caught sight of a possible blessing. The other two survivors by a small cliff as they were both on the verge of sleep. Thank goodness. Guys, I can't believe I found why his mouth was covered by Ajiro's tail. Ajiro shushed his green-haired classmate. Dude, something isn't right. I've been out here for a while, and all I've run into was this kid. He wiped his eyes from sleep as he pointed to Minda, who at this point was asleep with ugly snoring. I get it, it's hide and seek, but I've played this game many times enough to know that even when you're hiding, you'll run into a decent amount of hiders on accident. I only found the one and now you. He patted the ground beside him as Izuku sat down. Izuku had a bit of a nervous look to him. As so what are you saying, Ajiro? You don't think something is up, do you? Ajiro took a moment to think. He looked towards Minta's sleeping body as he got a plan. Okay, so hear me out on this. Back with the girls. As time was running short, the girls have decided to stay with their human BLD hound friend, JJRO, in order to track down their target. They ditched the whole first-come-first-take mentality as they were getting desperate. Now, the game really begins when they get Izuku a mobile. They looked to their dart guns and each felt like their life was on the line. Each had one dart left and only one each so if they wasted them, they might be forced to catch some live prey. See you croaked Abbott annoyed. Come on, Gyro, we're burning moonlight. Kaiuka has been getting similar remarks for the past couple minutes. Gyro finally barked back. Well maybe if you stopped fiddling around with your fingers and actually helped listen out, we would find him and not be walking around with our fingers jammed up our. Ashido covered her purple-haired friend's mouth as she pointed to three shadowy figures. One looked like he had grapes on his head. One looked like he had a trunk on his back and the third one looked like their body was chiseled by Aphrodite herself in the eyes of the girls as the figures looked like they were looking away from the group. Yurikaka made a movement of pointing fingers to each of the three figures. The girls silently readied themselves as some aimed the darts and others aimed themselves at the shadows, firing or launching themselves at the figures, hearing some thuds. Mina cheered. Yes, we got them. Oh, let's see the game we bagged. She and some of the girls dragged the figures into the light to investigate and practically scream. As they look down at their work, they see that they were tricked. On the ground were three dummies, two made of twigs and leaves and one a literal dummy as Minta was practically filled with enough tranquilizer from one dart to co an Indian elephant in proportion to his tiny tiny body. I can't believe it, we got jebated. Mina kicked the dummy of Ajiro hard enough to send the fake leaf head flying into a tree trunk, making it burst. Toru was checking a certain part of the Izuku dummy. This one is not even built right. Momo looked paranoid. Do you think they're onto us? That they knew we were going to fall for this trap. Irakaka was pacing back and forth. And no, come on, we still got time. Five minutes left on the clock. We can find him if we all split up. Deku-kun can't outmaneuver us all. And so they did. Unbeknownst to the girls, two people were watching from the hidden safety of a bush as both were pale as snow. Ajiro's plan seemed to work as they see their classmates have had ulterior motives. The tail man looked towards his pale buddy. He pretty much scream whispered as he believed the girls were safely out of earshot. Dude, they're after you. The green-haired child was as white as freshly fallen snow as so many thoughts raced through his mind. 
They're after me. Why? What did I do? Did I anger them? No, they would have told me to my face if I did. Am I being part of an elaborate prank? And no, that can't be it. Unless they're spies of the league. That has to be it. That explains why they've been extra buddy-buddy lately. They're trying to lower my guard. Izuku shook Abbott. Ajiro, we need to run and find a teacher, now. Ajiro, oh Ajiro. Izuku's heart sank as he saw the blonde-tailed man catching enough CS to fill a dictionary as a dart was launched directly into his big muscly tail. As if death himself was behind him, he shakily looked behind himself to see a purple-haired vixen trying her hardest to look like a sassy badass by blowing away a non-existent smoke from the barrel of the dart gun. Her eyes locked down on a green-haired Adonis, never breaking contact. Damn, she was doing a mediocre job at it, though. J. Jiru. She couldn't help but let out a small per victory laugh. Quiet, my dear. The others will hear you if they're still around. You should know this, but I hear all around me. I heard your little whispers a mile away. Her jack snaked around his wrists as they pulled him up, their eyes giving off the feeling of that similar to a cat and mouse. Izuku could barely let out a cry for help as he knew if he did. The only ones that would hear him would be the other girls in sleeping bodies. It might have been from fear, but Izuku felt as though he could not activate one for all if he even tried, so he was at the mercy of this punk rock predator. P please, don't kill me. You don't have to be a villain, Kaiyuka. I know there is good and why a finger was pressed to his lips. Jiru saw the puzzle pieces fall almost perfectly. She just needed a steady hand to put the final one in. Calm down, Greenie. No one is going to hurt you. Not on my watch. As if her mind was on a one-way track to make sure her prize was secure. It was as if she had the entire conversations planned out in her head. I would never turn you into the league. She was going to run with this threat. I've seen you. You got a great head on your shoulders and a heart in your chest, so I'll make you a deal. Her jack seized up. You're an awesome dude, and no doubt will be a great hero one day. I'll make sure you will live to see that day. Izuku could begin to see small tears begin to form in her eyes. They looked so real, and as far as both of them knew, they were although one couldn't notice them. K. Kaiyuka. S.H.H.H. You changed this villain's heart, kid. You've done so much for me. The time you've spent with me to get the performance for the festival perfect. Being a source of laughs. Being a beacon of hope and joy in abbot of an empty and lonely world. Jiru was shaking Abbott as her headphone jacks fully came off his wrists. I don't want that to be taken away from me. She wrapped her arms around him. Izuku was unsure of what had just transpired within the few short minutes that passed by. As if instincts kicked in, he returned the hug silently. Jiru's eyes went Abbott crazy, still full of tears, as her jacks were pointed at his backside now. So, sorry for this. As one jabbed into his back and one into his ear, she laughed as she let out a frequency that messed with his insides just enough to immobilize him and have him fall over passed out. She could not help but marvel at her prize and proceeded to carry him towards the exit. The remaining girls have realized they ran out of time. It looks like Izuku won, him and whoever else was awake and still hiding. As they made their way to the main wall and to the intercom to tell everyone the round was over, they caught a glimpse of a sight that made them bolt to the door just as it walked closing on them. The last thing they seen and will see until morning when a teacher reopens the doors was a petite-looking purple-haired girl with a green-haired hunk being held by her as she gave them a wink as the doors close, a locking sound being made shortly after. At the dorms, Kaiyuka could not help but marvel at her prize. She did it, by their own game's rules, she won. The girls have to back off of her man from now on. Maybe if she's feeling generous, she'll let the other girls look at and talk to him now and again. It might take some hard coaxing and some pulled strings to get things working, but she will go beyond to make sure she is not only the best girlfriend Izuku could ask for, but also make sure Izuku will thrive like never before. As she got to work discarding her lower half of her clothes, her jacks got to work by sending some waves to the still passed out Izuku's waist as she saw something move in his pants as her jacks got to tugging. Heh. <laughs> Python was a good description, Toru, as she got up and positioned herself above her soon-to-be new favorite ride. Her mind raced as she saw their future in her head while she was lowering herself. The papers and the magazines, the interviews and after parties, not to mention the news. Number 1 Rockstar, Kaiyuka Jiru, seen with Number 1 Hero, Deku at Clothing Store, Baby on the Way. She will end the night of being a hero with a show alongside her band she had since high school to another sold-out arena. One girl having the biggest fake smile imaginable as their lead singer went back home to her muse. She would see her husband learning to play a guitar and failing until she guided his scarred up hands with her own dainty ones. Her rear rubbing against her favorite disco stick throughout the lesson. Later she'll be carried to their bedroom to make more sins, not tragedies. No sweet little lies to be told, just the sounds of that being smacked as this purple-haired baby finally got back. And with one little movement, their fate was sealed. To be honest, she was going to win anyways. Jiru loved hide and seek, as she was still the undefeated champ to this day. It was 10am in the morning when Izuku woke from his bed. 
With a scream, Izuku backed into the wall by his bed as he breathed heavy, as though he had seen the devil himself. He looked around, confused as for some reason, the last thing that he remembers before going to sleep was. Kaiyuka, grabbing his head, Izuku felt around for something. Anything to make him feel like he isn't a dream. He searched around, until he felt a strange feeling in his nether regions. In his pants, he felt something. Wet. He checked, and woe and behold, he found himself with an eager trouser snake and a wet feeling around there. Oh god, I had a W wet dream, didn't I? The night before, Jiru couldn't help but laugh at her newfound victory, a few drops of a life-making nectar coming out of her now impure honeypot. Still connected, she laid down on her sleeping, green, chiseled hero as she dragged her finger across his chest and planted a small kiss on his face. Aizawa will kill us if he finds out about this. Oh, Izuku, you are going to be a great hero. I hope you'll be a great daddy too. She looked down at it sadly, a smile still on her face however. But not yet. I wouldn't want to add extra pressure on us with a kid just yet. I'll take care of it in the morning. She slowly got off as to not wake him up, a sad whimper as she heard the sound of her new toy come out of her. Let's get you to your room. Good thing the losers are still in Omega. She mustered all the strength she had left as she practically dragged the poor boy back to his room as he still was knocked out. Tossing Izuku on his bed, she was about to leave until, crap, he's still hard. Walking over, Kaiyuka had a brilliant idea as she pulled his pants back up and let her jack slide into his pants. Hey, Midoriya, did you ever wonder how many times my earphone jacks can wrap around you? She laughed as her joke fell on deaf ears. Don't worry, consider this a going away present. I'll be back around you soon. As her little job was complete, she left for the door and took one last gaze at her secret lover, content of her tracks being partially covered. Back to the present. Izuku couldn't wrap his head around this. Sure, he liked Kaiyuka a lot, but of all people, why her? A girl as cool as her wouldn't even spit in his direction. Besides, everyone knew she liked either Momo or Denki. What's a useless Deku going to ever do to earn the look from someone like that? Letting out a sigh, he looked at the clock. 10.05. Everyone may still be asleep. It is the weekend after all. He got up as thankfully. After doing a re-quick personal massage on himself to the purple-haired vixen of his dreams and his little problem going down, he got up and got dressed up for his morning workout routine. Usually an hour within it, Kirishima would be joining him followed by Tenya or Shoji, but for some reason none of them have appeared. It wasn't until he made his way back that he saw some of his classmates in the living room, each still asleep. It was 12 in the morning at this point, so of course he had to investigate. Poking around until someone woke up, no one even budged. It wasn't until Izuku saw the dark raven himself and the shimmering Frenchman being some of the only others awake that was when his questions would get answered. You do not remember, Midoriya. The girls got you and the rest of the guys to play some game last night over in Omega. Takoyami said as he was sipping from a cup of his black coffee. Heiyama was somehow both talking to and looking past Izuku at an unidentified fourth party of sorts. We, you all left early to play. Hide and seek, if my memory is as great as my looks. Izuku shook his head. I can't remember anything. Like my mind is all fuzzy. All I remember is a loud noise and everything both before and after that is all static. Takoyami put a hand under his beak. Mayhaps, you didn't join them on their little soiree. That explains why you're here and didn't come with them all sleep deprived. Strange, you looked so excited when the girls asked us all. Now if you excuse me. He lifted up Ayama over his head. I must add this shiny to my nest. He ran to his room with a protesting French man above him. Midoriya looked at Takoyami's abandoned cup of coffee. I think I remember that, but my mind is all messed up. Maybe I dreamt it. Giving himself a few smacks, when he opened his eyes, he was met with two partially triangular ones as he practically fell back before two earlobes wrapped around his wrists and pulled him back up. Jiru saved him from a possibly not hurtful fall, with Izuku noticing she was somewhat happy for some reason. Morning, Midori. You're looking on edge, you okay? Oh oh, uh, Kaiyuka, good morning. Um, I'm okay, just uh, had a rough night. Izuku looked at his wrists as that feeling of the lobes wrapped around his wrists felt all too familiar. Yeah, I guess I had a bad dream or something. Listen, I think I'm going to head out for a while. I need to clear my head. And with that, he left the purple-haired woman who stole his innocence without his knowledge in the main room. Kaiyuka felt a hand on her shoulder as she laughed, a newfound superiority on her ego as she did not even bother to look back. Well well, look who's back. How is sleeping on the ground like? She felt something wet and slimy wrap around her waist as she was pulled back into Yuraraka's room by two of the other girls, a smile never leaving her face. Mina was the first to speak, fighting the urge to not burn off one of those stupid dangly ox gourds her musical friend sported. You cheated. You cheated. You knew that game was your ace in the hole the moment suggested it. Momo was halfway through making a nail bat. All she needed now was the nails. You knew what was going on, and played dumb so we would all split up. 
Jiru laughed, uncaring. And, you know the saying, all is fair in love and war, and frankly, I won both of them. All because you cheated. I thought we agreed we wouldn't use our quirks. Toru whined as she stopped, forgetting the fact she was planning the same thing with using her invisibility to follow Izuku silently. Jiru smirked. She was waiting for the big reveal but she needed it to be right when she did. As she got up, she let out a sigh. I get it, I get it. Listen, everyone, I'm sorry. I'll admit, maybe I cheated. I can't help it when I got these things on me 24-7. Listen, how about I treat you all to Abbot of a second chance for you all? You all name the game, I'll try not to cheat as much. Achako gave it a thought. As much as she wanted to float this girl into the sun, she went against it as she still valued Kayuka as a friend. All right, fine. Maybe, maybe we can think of something. Kayuka smiled as she grabbed her gravity-defying friend's hands in her own. Great, now it you excuse me, I need to head down to the pharmacy. Momo looked puzzled. P pharmacy, did you get Abbott of a cold last night or something? Jiru was halfway through the door, closing it behind her as she popped her head out to talk. Oh no, just some birth control. See ya, ladies. And with that, she closed the door. Just as where her head was is now filled by acid that burned away part of a poster on Achako's wall, mainly the actual wall itself, and a few of the nails that were previously going to be going into the bat as they punctured some wires, resulting in Yuraka's light going out. All was silent. I can fix that. Both Ashido and Yeyurazu said in unison to a possible blushing but still murderous intent girl. They couldn't tell with the lack of light and they couldn't tell if that was for better or worse. Maybe I can still still float some people into the sun after all. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Momo slammed her hands down on her head in anger. This is just wrong. We played right into her hands. And now look at us. I haven't even had the chance to get six feet close to Izuku outside of passing by him during class or a rare way. And maybe we can think of something. Yuraka sat in the corner of her bed, sitting in the fetal position. Although she looked distraught and heartbroken, in her mind, she was going through idea after idea on how to get rid of Kayoyuka and make it look like an accident that didn't involve her straight up killing her. Ashido was just pacing around, trying to do exactly that as she jumped and pointed at them. I got it, maybe we can do it again but make her cover her jacks in tinfoil. Toru probably shook her head and sighed. That's a dumb idea, Mina, even for you. No offense. What do you think, Sue? Sue. She looked over at the froggy friend as she sat down facing and looking out the window. Asui looked back and let out a ribbit. I got a plan, but we need you three for it. She pointed to Momo, Toru and Mina. Here is the plan. We break into Principal Nezu's office and change up the schedule. We know what's coming up thanks to Yeyorazu here. That being that the hostage exercise is going to be happening later this week. Mina covered her ears. No 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 no, not him. We we don't need to bring him into this at all, maybe something else. Although she thought her principal was still the second cutest thing in the world, the little guy still gave her nightmares from her fight against him. So anyways, here is the idea. Su Yu didn't seem to acknowledge that her pink friend was now rocking back and forth on the floor. The plan is as follows. Mina melts the lock with her acid when he leaves for home or whatever, letting Toru and Momo to be able to break the lock easy. Toru sneaks in unseen and gets to work on typing out a note for Aizawa to change the plans for today's assignment. Momo, after she gets done with that, you get to work on changing the lock and door to make sure it looks like we were never there. The plan is foolproof, Kiro. All were silently jut looking at Asui, except Ashido of course as the little fluffy stuffed animal Achako slipped under the bed almost gave her a heart attack. Toru clapped. I like it. This plan has no chance of failing now. Momo couldn't believe what her friends were agreeing on, but knowing it would be a four against one situation, she swallowed her pride and gave a shaky thumbs up. Oh okay, as long as we don't get in trouble. We could get expelled or worse if we're caught breaking into a teacher's room, let alone the principal's room itself. Thoughts rushed through her mind as she saw visions of her ending up on the street after getting expelled, resulting in her both losing her dream of being a hero and being with Izuku for a two birds one stone situation. Suyu hugged her gal pals and soon to be lesser classmates. Great, Kiro, let the best lady win. Back in the lockers. And that's pretty much how it went down. Now can you let me go? I need to get back to changing. Asui got out by going under Jiru's arms as she was shaking with anger at this point. Jiru smacked herself abbot. Why you won't even know if Izuku will be the hostage that we will be saving. For all we know, it can be you or me. Mina had an odd smirk before she let out a laugh. For some odd reason, the rushes of adrenaline from doing the act of breaking into the principal's office, the room of the animal that she now needed therapy on the weekends to get over her fear of, and maybe getting a chance to put Kayuka in her place sent odd emotions through her. Oh, on the contrary, my purple friend. The whole thing is that it's a vote of who is going to be the hostage. Look at us. Five votes already backed up for picking muscle. Eda and Todoroki will be easy to convince. Tenya has been noticing Izuku has been sleepy more often for some reason. And Todoroki just needs some prodding to choose Izuku as like half of the class is pretty sure he may have a bromance for him. So that's seven now. No one will be voting for Kota, Sato, Kirishima or Shoji as they're either big, heavy or both. No one also will be voting for themselves either, except maybe Deku to get some time to relax Abbott. Achako said as she never even looked out of her locker, still getting ready. Jiru looked at her friends and scoffed. Ew, thought about this, huh? I will admit, that's smart thinking. Just be warned, that man is mine. We are destined to be together, and I'm going to make sure destiny follows through. As she walked out, she gave each of them a slight jab and jolt with her jacks as she passed by. That was a warning, girls. See you croaked angry. I might consider actually harming now. She looked inside her locker as she kissed her fingers and gently pressed them against the mouth of the picture of Izuku she had inside it. Mina shook her head. Wow, girl, that's just cheesy. Yeorazu just peep at her head at the alien queen in disbelief. Says the girl who has a pillow with a picture of Izuku's face taped onto it and has it in his missing All Might boxers too under her bed. Mina was as white as now. I thought we agreed we weren't going to talk about that, Momo Yeorazu. Toru let out a sigh of relief. Thank goodness I'm not the only one. Now she got odd looks. That was. Out loud, wasn't it? Outside Beta, Aizawa stood by a ballot box as he looked towards the class. All right. Everyone write down a name of who you want to be THR hostage. I'll tally up the votes once you're all done it. He then took a quick power nap. Standing up, Jiru looked around Abbott nervous as she herself found it that she was voting for Izuku Abbott too late. She couldn't help it. The thoughts of his muscly form pressed against her back. Their eyes meeting, Izuku saying how beautiful hers are. 
They lock lips as he is thankful for his hero. They go out on their first date. Aizawa marries her off to the green champion of her heart and All Might acts as their minister as their graduation ceremony becomes their marriage ceremony. She smacked herself and mumbled under her breath, barely realizing she put the paper with Izuku's name in the box. Damn it, stupid, sussy Midoriya. Meanwhile, the other girls got to work converting others to vote for one person. Their plan was to say things like you won't want to carry any of the bigger guys, do you? Midoriya looks like he could use a break, don't you think? Deku will have no choice but to bow to you and thank you for saving him, isn't that what you want? After a couple of minutes, Aizawa woke up and he went through the box. Alright, everyone, let's see who the sacrificial lamb is going to be. Izuku Midoriya 14 votes hot babe 1 vote sleep 1 vote SOS 1 vote a HH1 partially burnt note as much as I agree with the sleep vote. It seems that you're going to be the hostage, problem child. Come on, Aizawa said as he picked the now sleeping human green bean up over his shoulder and began to make his way towards the location the flag is going to be, leaving the students to get to their position. Jiru felt her stomach get tied up in knots as now as she can't believe how she practically set herself up for this, but she shook her head to refocus as she got in a ready position to listen and look for her secret love. No tricks. Achako had a nervous smile as she looked at her hands. Gotta go all out. Mina bounced around Abbott to pump herself up. Grab and go. Toru was already stripped down as she took a deep breath. For him. Yeyorazu cracked her back as she mentally prepared herself at the thought of fighting her friends for not only for the grade, but for love. For all he's done for me. Suyu shivered Abbott as she got into a position ready to jump. I'll do anything to return the favor. Because I love you, Izuku Midoriya. The sound of a horn went off. It was their green light. Let the games begin. The day before the hostage exercise, Nezu sat in the teacher's lounge, drinking his tea as he finished explaining what happened a few nights ago. And that is how the schedule was warped, Mr. Aizawa. Your students would have gotten away with it if it were not for the security cameras. Nezu said still with a smile on his face as the black-haired teacher was practically steaming, while other teachers were just silent. Aizawa slammed his coffee cup on the table. I swear, those kids are dead tomorrow. Nezu put his paw on the class one a teacher. Now now, do not be too rash. After all, they had access to the whole database. They could have easily lowered the defenses, changed grades or leaked private information throughout the world. You have good students, Shouta. All they did was change the rules Abbott. He took a sip of his drink. Tashinori looked at the small bear dog rodent thing with a small hem. But why would they do that is my main question. It does not make sense, especially for a class rep to be part of it. He took a big swig of his tea. Nezu let out a laugh. Well to get to your little protege, Yagi. It's like any situation in the animal kingdom. They're fighting for their ideal mate. He saw All Might's true form let out a mini mist of what was once a drink through a spit take. I expect you to clean that. Yagi needed to catch his breath. Why you can't be serious? I mean, I understand if the kid would have won admire, but those three ladies from his class, and those three specifically. You must be pulling my leg, sir. I did not say it was limited to those three. I have a hunch it is all the fair young maidens in that class who are pining for him. It surely will be an interesting show to see. Would you not all agree? After all, I know all of your little bets, everyone. My money is on Ms. Ishido, personally. Young Midoriya can really help her reach her full potential. Principal Nezu said as he put away his cup to get back to work. Midnight cheered. Oh, such youthful love. I might hop in on their little games as well. If only I was younger. I think Momo has the best chances, as I've told Mike time and time again. PFFT. Creator girl has nothing on my favorite guitar player, Jiru. Bet, she no doubt will win his stereo heart. Mike said and he practically had his finger against Midnight's cheek, resulting in it getting bit. Nipe. Snipe out his hat down on the table as he laughed. Do not count out Hagakure. She may not look like much, literally, but she can do great if she has the chance. Soon, the room was filled with teachers saying who had the best chance, with both Tashinori and Aizawa to have their heads down on the table and letting out groans. You're all like giant children, Aizawa said as he glared as his two smiling friends who never took their eyes off him. Kai was betting on Tsuyu. He put his head back down. Tashinori, however, didn't even bother to look as he just raised his hand. Achako, I don't know if I should be proud that my boy is such a lady magnet or disappointed that he hasn't noticed it yet. Guess the next lesson I'm giving him is the talk when I get the chance. How come I never got that treatment when I was his age? Doggy screamed in his mind. When Izuku woke up, he found himself tied up to a large pole in the middle of the roof of a large building. On one hand, this is the first time he had slept without the worry of a wet dream, unlike the past week. On the other hand, however, he realized what exactly was going on as he tried to jolt up but was unable to. Wow, what the heck, whwh why am I here? Wait, wait 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 wait. 
Ah man, in the hostage. I didn't want to be the hostage. Izuku practically yelled and fidgeted to get out and up. Maybe there was enough time to check with Aizawa and have someone else to be in his spot. Unknown to him, the assignment was already underway. If he squinted, he could make out what looked like little dots in the streets either running towards him or climbing up to get better vantage points in the distance. They're all coming. Why do I feel like that is not going to end well? So you could already see the roof where Izuku was. Luckily for her, climbing around and hoping from place to place is her specialty. Don't worry, Midoriya. Your hero is coming for you. It might have been the thrill of the hunt that is affecting her mind. But she couldn't help but imagine all she will do when she gets her tongue on him as an eerie smile crept on her face. All she had to do was take out some of the competition along the way. Luckily for her, this playing field was much different than that of Omega. A lot can happen in a city, so a lot can in Beta. She just needs to weed out the others. Momo was probably one of the few who did not immediately rush in to get the flag. After all, it would be pointless to considering who exactly she is going to against. Kirishima was a living battering ram. Tenya was Tenya, but Hugo could just blast himself over everything and not to mention the brunette beach, Achako, can just fly over everything. So, she deceived a plan. A plan to not play the hero in Russian just yet, but to play her villain role early and set up some traps. How and, there, Abbot of Sticky Adhesive should put most of them out of the running. Just gotta make sure I can get them here. Soon, my little mouse, the cat is going to play. And then, she'll get a nice meal. She licked her lips, hopefully no one heard her. Unlucky for her. The same blonde man who got a dart in the tail a week prior to all this was passing by an alleyway and let out a muffled yell. First hunting, now talking about eating. Is Izuku being stalked by a group of freaking cannibal villains? I gotta get to him stat. And so, he ran. Only to fall for one of the traps. This one involved tripline and a familiar looking dart gun with darts coating in an equally familiar substance as he fell past out on the floor, a dart once again in his tail. Yeirazu, investigating the thud and seeing her friend on the floor, had an odd smirk. One down, sixteen to go. Iraraka, however, stayed on the ground instead of flying. Knowing her friends, they're probably planning stuff to take her out of the running above the ground, not below the sky. That makes things a bit difficult as she can't exactly fly up now to get a good view of where actually her green best friend and in her mind, one day green husband, was located. Climbing up another set of stairs in order to get high ground without being undetected, however, was a pain on her legs. Damn it, I hate stairs. Why couldn't the mock buildings be made with elevators or something? Found ya, my green light of the day. She didn't find him technically but was able to listen out for his cries with her jacks. All she had to do was get to him and then she could take him back to continue paving the way for a boulevard of broken dreams for the girls. Mina was having some difficulties. Damn it, why is it so far? I've been looking for like 20 minutes for the right building. I'm never going to find him. She put her hand on a tree as she was trying to catch her breath. As she was trying to take a breath, some of her acid leaked out of her hand and onto the tree as it began to burn though the trunk. The tree fell into a large window as Mina jumped back from all the shattered glass. Then, she got an idea as a smile crept on her face. Wait, I can play a villain role. This can work. Oh yes, this can work. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Midoriya looked at Ida as both were confused as they remember. Ah, right, she's supposed to play a villain role to whoever has the hostage. Wait, I'm the hostage. Izuku looked at his legs. I'm gonna get caught in the crossfire, aren't I? Tenya took a semi-dramatic pose for his hero role again. Ah, you are not a fellow hero. You are a villain, are you not? I will not let you take this poor citizen into any more harm. Prepare to be taken down in a non-lethal way. He readied himself as his engines began to activate. I am Ingenium. The one who strikes swift as the why he looked down as a pink appendage wrapped around his ankles and tripped him up. As his engines were already activated, it rocketed himself into the ground through a few floors. Sue smiled at her handiwork. He'll be okay. I hope. Now, to save the hostage. Midoriya, I recommend you keep still. She got to getting rid of the binding on the green successor. Izuku stayed patiently as he was caught off guard by his friend sending their other friend straight through the ground. Uh, my hero. He could only look Abbott as she got to freeing him. You're, uh, not having trouble, are you? Asui was actually an Abbott of a trance. There he was, the man of her dreams ever since he helped save her during the USJ incident, and one of the bravest men she ever had the honor of meeting. Binded. It might have been her animal instincts, but she had to fight the urge to not just make him her mate then and there and Izuku would be at her mercy. The only thing that stopped her was that it was still during school and most likely she would get in trouble for all that. At least, out in the open, that would happen. Maybe if she got him inside a building just outside of view. She snapped out of it. And no, just that these knots are too tight. I'll have to untie you where it is more safe, Kiro. I got an idea. Hold on. She wrapped her tongue around his waist and slowly began to lift him up and over the pole, so although he was free, his wrists were still bound behind his back. I can feel his abs with my tongue alone. It's so close. So close to his. Just as she was lost in thought, she felt a hand brush her arm as she began floating, causing her to drop Izuku onto the ground. At least he was free. Asui flailed in the air as she wrapped her tongue around a railing to be used as an anchor. Ohaho, waha hiwa. She tried to speak but was unable to make many real words due to her tongue being out. Iraraka bent down to check on Izuku. Are you okay, sir? Do you need my services? Izuku was rubbing his rear abbot as he had abbot of pain from the landing. I'm okay. Iraraka, just abbot of pie he looked towards her but was met with something else as she was bending over to check on him. Two things, to be exact as a huge blush spread across his face. EBB. Achako had Abbott of a smile to look like she was helpful on the outside, but on the inside was having a proud moment. Melance, come on, sir, I'll get you to safety and then to medical help if you need it. No need to be shy. She pulled out a small knife she kept from Gunhead's training as instead of untying the knot, she just cut the bindings and then put it away. I am not that strong, so I will have to transport you some other way. She went down and grabbed his hand as for a moment. The world stopped for her as she got a happy feeling in her heart. She was finally doing something she has been wanting to do for who knows how long. That little action was all she needed to affirm not only her emotions, but that all of the little things she's been doing to try and get to him was worth it. Then, her best friend began to float, snapping her out of her lewd thoughts. I'll have to float you the way back. Whatever you do, don't let go, okay sir? Uraraka held his hand tight as she made her way back down the stairs as Izuku looked back at a still-floating Asui. I, wapout meh, Asui said, still having her tongue hold onto the rails. I will let you go when I get the civilian back to safety, you villain. She had an odd smirk that only Asui got to see, as if she was telling her, if I remember that you're here, and proceeded down the stairs with an angry ranting frog girl airborne behind her and a green, muscular cinnamon bun holding her hand. On the ground, Izuku was somewhat glad that of all the girls that grabbed him was Yuraka. He knew her enough to know that she wouldn't try to harm him along the way like Bakugo or accidentally forget they have him and end up getting attacked as if he was just collateral damage from someone like Kaminari or Todoroki. But still, he could not shake the fact that even if was safe, he was not safe safe. Achako kept looking forward on the path to exit as she broke the silence. If she finally got a one-on-one -on -one moment like this, she is going to take it. Dideku-kun, listen, there is something I need to tell you. Izuku just floated above her as his hand was still in hers. Um, Uraraka, is now a good time to tell me something? Can you wait until after we get out of here? Achako snapped Abbott. No, and no, no, this is the right time. Deku, I, I wanted to tell you this for so long, I, think you're amazing. She kicked herself mentally. Um, thank you, Uraraka. I think you're pretty amazing too. He just smiled awkwardly as he was clueless to the whole situation. She let out Abbott of an annoyed whine. And no, I mean, thank you, but not like that, I. I think you're super cool. Achako shook her head as what she wanted to say came out wrong again. Izuku was still clueless as he could see an odd tint to her cheeks. I isn't that kinda like the same thing as he was cut off as she pulled him down to be face to face with him as she held both his hands to keep him both weighted down and looking at her. Damn it, Izuku, I'm trying to tell you that I, I. Achako took a deep breath. 
I love you, Deku-kun. All was silent as the yell was so loud that birds around Beta flew off. However, it did more than just alert some birds. Why why you lie 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 like him and me? Why you lie like him me? Izuku of course became a stuttering mess as now his face was as red as a tomato. Yes, for the love of all that is heroic. I love you, Deku. You have done so much for me. You gave me hope. You gave me friendship. You gave me determination and a new hero that hasn't even gone pro yet. You're a strong hero who stands up to any injustice. You're amazing. I love you, Izuku. She pulled him into an alleyway as she held his scarred hands in her dainty yet firm ones. Izuku could only just look at her as she looked away. Achako. I I I. I love you. T he was cut off due to a sudden jolt in his neck as he passed out in the air, causing Achako to release him as he fell to the floor with a little thud and a cloud of dust. There we go. Couldn't have him tell those words to you of all people, you brunette bimbo. Achako looked to her side to see a scowling punk girl as her jacks retracted back to said girl. Your Araka's bubbly personality seemed to fade as a scowl appeared on her face as she looked at the punk girl. You ruined my moment. You walking washboard. What, is little Kaiwika angry that someone is finally making a move on the hunk of hunks when he is awake instead of just doing it when he is passed out? Kaiwika's jacks pointed directly at Achako. No, just that I can't believe the little girl finally grew into her chest. Still, you can go now, I quote hell I'll be taking my man to the exit now. Her jacks picked up some scrap metal and glass from the floor for some defense, unless you're wanting to have a little fight first. With a new sense of pride and smugness as she looked down at the guy that was just about to admit his feelings to her was now on the floor, Yuraka turned to her rival. You're kidding me, right? You're kidding me. A girl like you, who shouldn't even have made it into class 1A, let alone UA itself is wanting to going against me. I'll tell you what, I'll humor you for Abbott and give you Abbott of a chance to do some damage to me before I send you into the SK. She felt something sharp scrape her cheek as she shook Abbott and felt her face and looked at her fingers. BLD. That was the last straw as she practically rushed the poor girl into the main street again, leaving a knocked out Izuku in the alley. Jiru got up as her jacks inserted themselves into her speakers, ready now. Hehe, <laughs> seems I struck more than a nerve with that one. Don't worry, I'm sure Recovery Girl has something to prevent tinnitus later. Here, can you hear that my heart is bleeding for your little problem? Let me help you hear it. She let out a heartbeat fuzz as it sent the brunette into a wall and shattered the glass beside her as pieces fell near and around her. Keep your hands off my Izuku. Achako got up shakily as she popped her ears. Hee <laughs> hee, is that all you got? A little sound wave being your big trick is just so lame. She put her hands on the shards of glass as they began to rise. Let me tell you something, Kaiwuka. And this time you better hear it. Izuku shakily looked up as his vision was blurred and he could faintly make out a pink and black blurry blob with brown hair looking at something outside of his blurry view as he could hear some faint words. Izuku is my score, and the only way you're taking my prey is from my cold, dead, padded fingers. As he was about to pass out again, the blurry blob leaving his view, he felt himself be dragged up by and pulled by something or someone. But, why couldn't he see what was carrying him? Maybe he'll wake up later to find out. But he'll take care of that later as his eyes close again. Near the entrance, Toru couldn't help but laugh as she can't believe how easy it was to swoop in and grab him. Don't worry, Greenie, just a few more buildings and we will be home afar she stopped in her tracks as she saw something that sent fear down her spine. In the middle of the road and by the entrance sat Momo Yeirazu on a chair she made. All around her were some of her fellow classmates trapped in little non-lethal traps that seem were almost tailor-made to catch them specifically, or were trapped in the adhesive on the ground. Each step she took, she created a small paper under her feet so she can safely walk over and not get stuck. Her eyes locked onto Toru, if she was able to be seen. Momo chuckled as she patted what she assumed was Hagakir's head as the girl stood there in fear. Thank you for making my job easy, sweetie. She grabbed Izuku from the invisible girl and simply walked away from Toru and over the sticky trap and stuck classmate. She looked back at the shaking gloves and boots. You girls should have paid more attention in class, Toru. And with that, Momo presented the still-sleeping Midoriya to their teacher as proof she won. Aizawa was a bit freaked out, but not by Momo. Heck, he's seen scarier in his past school years. What freaked him out was all the work he will have to do to free the students that were either still in the middle of a fight or trapped or even both. Alright, Yeyurazu, uh, get him to his dorm, I'll take care of all of this. He pinched the bridge of his nose as he walked past the class president. Yeyurazu smiled big as she knew she one killed two birds with one stone. Yes, sir. Do not worry, I'll get him to the dorms safely. And with that, she made her way back to the dorms. Over the intercom, a blonde man let out a cry. And with that, Momo Yeyurazu has passed the assignment. Flag, caught. Across beta, groans of either pain or anger were heard. Fight stopped, more specifically one involving a gravity user and a punk rock girl as both were covered in cuts and scrapes as they looked at each other with both anger and sadness. We have seeked up. Kaiwika looked at her partially slashed up clothes as she fell face first down. 
Yup. Achako soon followed. Under her own trap. Aka a tree log. A pink girl held her head up with one hand as she let out an angry sigh and then let out a yell. Fooled three times, damn it. At the dorms. Momo sung to herself as she took out a comb and got to doing her hair. La la la. You'll be the prince and I'll be the princess. She looked back at a sleeping Izuku on her king-sized as she went up to him and pulled down his pants. All of her romance novels have prepared her for this moment. And now that her prince was here in the flesh, she'll finally become a queen. She began to undress, the smile on her face never leaving. This is what the girls in her books did. It's a love store why? Each book and each steamy chapter, whether it being a PG-1 or an intimate one, could not compare to how her heart began to feel as she hoped this will work out. She positioned herself as she grabbed the big little Izuku and readied it, using her other hand as balance. Her eyes locked down onto Midoriya as she waited for the second he woke up. Soon, his eyes fluttered open Abbott then snapped open as he saw the situation he was in. A crazed look in the eye of the class won a president as even if he wasn't restrained, he felt like he couldn't fight back if he tried. Why 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 a o y o r o z u? What's going oh yeah Momo laughed Abbott scarily as she moved her balance hand to his cheek and put a finger on his mouth as both blushed crazy. Baby, just say yes. She lowered herself down slowly and then all at once when it got past that part, she looked down at him and lowered herself to kiss the now in shock hero. My Romeo, tonight will be an interesting night. And an even more interesting morning. At least Momo caught more than just some dumpy old flag. She got the entire pole and the prize as well. Midoriya felt all life leave his being as he looked towards his side and was met face to face with the woman who took his innocence as all he could see was her twisted smile. He please, Toga, tell me where Yeyurazu is and we can forget all about this. I'll keep my mouth shut, I promise, he said, hoping that this imposter would go quietly and give him answers after what felt like an eternity in his friends and one possible crush's bed. Unlucky for him, Yeyurazu let out a laugh as she propped herself up on her arm to look down at her new prize as she made a small doll of him in her hand. No Toga here, just Yeyurazu, but please. She got closer, maybe a bit too close for comfort on one side. Call me Momo. She gave his cheek a lick as if she was a cat who got herself a new treat. Or will honey be better for us, darling? Izuku felt his face burn as a deep blush overtook him as he tried to look behind her but his eyes kept drifting to her figure. H honey. Yawa. And Momo, why did? Why did you do this? I feel wrong, Yuraka told. She told me something earlier, but I didn't get to finish talking to her. I think she said something about loving him he was cut off by a pair of lips pressed against his. Momo had enough time to plan this out. In hindsight. She hoped that she would not have to do this as she did love and value her friendship with Midoriya, and hoped it would blossom into something more because of this, but she trusted too much in male instincts when she did the deed. This wasn't someone like Kaminari or Maita, this was something more. Someone more. Momo pulled away to speak. I did it to protect you, Midoriya. She dropped her smile and sat up, giving him a better view as she cackled in her mind but simultaneously hated herself for doing this to one of her friends. But she couldn't risk letting the catch go after so much work of throwing out the line. You couldn't tell it, but your Raka has been using you since day one of coming here. Your fight with her against Ada and Bakugo. I can tell she was kicking back while you did most of the heavy lifting. She stays close to you, all because she knows if she hangs out with you and Ada, life will be easy when she doesn't have to work alone. We speak a lot behind closed doors, Midoriya. Izuku just looked up as he felt his world break around him once again, unsure of anything. Yuraka said that. And no, you're lying. Why you have to be, you just have to. But then again, SS she hasn't been around me lately. Like, she is much more distant now. Momo went back down and rested her head on his shoveler and felt up his abs and chest. Every tone muscle sent new waves of pleasure through her body, but with every scar also sending waves of pain through her. Whether self-made or caused by outside forces, she couldn't believe someone as nice and kind as him could be subjected to such pain. That's why I did it. I could not risk a kind soul be subjected to someone so manipulative to someone as sweet as you. She hugged him, those words not being entirely fake. I want to make sure no one hurts you again. I may not be as strong as Todoroki or as confident as someone like Mina when it comes to people, and the skies above know you can throw a punch, but I want to try my hardest to make sure no one hurts you here. She poked the spot where his heart is. It was in a fit of emotional distress, because I, like you, Izuku Midoriya. Midoriya tried to process all that has happened. As much as he didn't want to believe it, he somehow convinced himself to think Momo would not lie to him, appreciately after what just happened. His mind felt weak at the idea of one of his closest friends using him. Momo, I'll be H honest. I didn't expect someone like you to go after Emmy. There are so many better people for you, I'm just useless. A useless deck don't. Finish that sentence. You're much more than that. Much more. Momo had her arms wrapped around his neck in a hug. Izuku felt something in his chest as he felt not a naked body hugging him. 
but just the fact someone else besides his mother hugged him and told him he is much more than himself. Momo, I I, think I love you too. He returned the hug to her. He couldn't see her face, but Momo had an wicked smile, even if her words still held truth. She was just proud that she is now with the man that made her want to be much more than just any normal hero. She'll create a new world with him, right by his side. Now only if the others will back off. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
First off, I hope you don't just see him as a personal cum dispenser for your midnight snacks, Ashido said as she pointed her finger down at her. That's weird and rude even for me. Secondly, we wanted to know. She kneeled to Jiru. How would you like another chance at getting your snack? Mina felt a bit disgusted saying it. Even if she hopefully knew Kaiyuka did not mean it like that, Kaiyuka just sat there. I'm listening. Hagakure pulled out the journal from Tsuyu's backpack, pushing away a green-looking object that she recognized but won't admit to knowing what it was in the process as she showed Jiru the page. This is the game. Kaiyuka only let out a small laugh. Okay, I'm down. Let's enjoy this game. Almost all at once, as if they knew what the others were about to say, spoke up. Blind man's bluff. Tashinori paced back and forth in the lounge, looking over his flashcards as to how he is going to have to have the talk with his young pupil. He banged to smack his face to get himself to focus as he has been postponing this for a week now. Oh okay, young Midoriya. There comes a moment in every hero's life where he know, that's too weird. Okay, okay. Young one, as a young man, you're probably having odd feelings lately and that's normal since. He threw his notes down on the floor as he ran his fingers through his hair and pulled it. Why is this so hard? A knock came from the door. Izuku walked in, shaking Abbott. Oh, all might, I need to talk to you about something. It's about girls. Toshi screamed in his mind. Shit. Ah oh, yes, come sit down, kid. Kicking the cards under the couch, he took a seat. I'm guessing this has to sew with a little special lady you have on your mind. Midoriya blushed as he tried to hide his face sat down as well, talking quietly. I I guess you can say that. Uh, all might, have you ever had to deal with? Yagi lifted his hand to stop him. Easy young one, speak up. I can't hear you that well. You see, as a man, I've dealt with odd feelings when it comes to ladies as well. There were many classmates back in the day that I had emotions and feelings for. Um, all might, I don't I mean, I don't mean like. Izuku could not find the words to explain what exactly he was going through. Shoot, what do I say? All might, something has been happening with me and Yeyurazu. Tashinori felt his heart stop Abbott. On one hand, he was under the impression that his pupil has found a lady friend to love and therefore was proud. On the other hand, he was heartbroken that he believed the little gravity girl in Midoriya's class was not the one that was one day going to be his potential daughter-in-law. I see. Well, I guess I can. Uh, dang, kid, Yeyurazu. Okay, okay. Guess I can skip the part of buying condoms since she can, uh, make them. Toshi blushed as he has to now think about what to say. Midoriya was silent for a while. Uh, what? Yagi had a small chuckle. I mean, I understand that you're getting to the point where you might want to do more. Intimate things with your lady friend, but I recommend waiting until the time is right. He looked away as he tried to not look the young boy in the face. Why you're still in school and such actions could result in consequences later on. Now, um, I will support you as much as I can, but please be careful when you do. Izuku felt BLD rush to his face. All might, I mean there is something much more than that happening with her. Yagi spat out a lot of BLD. Kid, please tell me she isn't already with one. Oh god, the books didn't prepare me for this. He shot up and walked around the room holding his head. Damn it, sensei, why didn't you have this talk with me? Tashinori sat back down and had his head in his hands. Okay, okay, we can maybe talk to Nezu about involving a program for pregnant students or something. Izuku had to smack his teacher to snap him out. All might, that's not it, listen for once, please. He recoiled Abbott when he realized he just smacked his idol. I am sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Nagi rubbed his cheek. No, I think I needed that. Sorry for jumping. What's on your mind, kid? Izuku took a deep breath. Momo has been doing. Well her and I, we. He took a moment to think. Although what they did was wrong at first, he unknowingly had his mind warped Abbott to trust her and not want to put her at risk for anything. She is still his friend at the end of the day and he can't forgive himself if anything were to happen to her. Did a girl ever pull you off to do things? How did you deal with it? Kid, look at me. Yagi put up two fingers, twice, one time after a long training session. One of my classmates pulled me into an empty fake house to do things. I knew her for a good while before, apparently saying something on how I inspired her and she wanted to repay the favor. He shivered. It is scary. I'm guessing Miss Yeyurazu did the same thing. Izuku couldn't believe what his mentor said, so he just nodded. Why yeah? Toshi sighed. Well that both makes this conversation harder and easier. Listen, kid, I'm not you, but what I did was tell the proper authorities and have them sort it out. He put his hand on Midoriya's shoulder. If it makes you feel better, one for all is okay. You can pass it on through. That, if you so choose. But you need to be aware you are doing that and must give it willingly. Trust me, I asked my teacher the same question. Although, I did get smacked halfway across the school when I did, so. He let out a small nervous chuckle. Izuku only sat there as he let the words sink in as a weight was lifted from his shoulders. I see. Thanks, all might. Um, I'll think about what to do about this. I'll see you later, thank you for the talk. 
He left the room and grabbed his chest as he let out a huge sigh of relief and agony, embarrassment. Inside the room, Tashinori was doing the same thing. At Omega, the girls stood in a small huddle, relaying what their ulterior motive was for this game in particular. Toru clapped her hands, so to make it fair. No interfering. That way it is more fair and all luck. Yeah, if you're found first, you have to leave until all of us are found. Mina placed her finger to her chin as she was abbot lost in thought. Yuraka felt her band-aid. But is this the end? Like once this one is done, we are going to stop the games. No, I doubted that we will stop. In fact I fear there will be more if my gut is correct. So you looked at her book one last time before closing it and putting it away somewhere. The girls lied and wait for their prey to come into their den. Aka the battleground of Omega. Their plan was to have Tsuyu or Achako talk to Izuku about their little game, and take it from there as they had the greatest connection to him. Iraraka took a deep breath, as this very well was the first time in a while that she was possibly going to talk to him after being avoided for so long. The sound of a door opening snapped her out of her little internal dilemma. Iraraka shook her head. Okay, it's time to do this. She walked up and bowed to him. Deku, it's good to see you. We called you out here to ask you something. Taking a step back, he tried to get away from her but realized he was between a wall and a soft face. It seems even if Momo was lying to him, he was worried if some of the words she told him had value to it. Oh oh, Yuraka. Uh, what is it that you need to ask me? Suyu pokes his cheek with her tongue to get him to look at her. We wanted to know if you would like to play a game with us, Kiro. The mention of the word game sent shivers down his spine. I I I don't know. Every time a game or something similar like that has happened, I felt like I was being hunted down in a way. Please play with us, Deku. We promise that won't happen again. This game is different. Achako tried to protest. See you only let out a small croak. It's called Blind Man's Bluff. How to play is like something similar to Marco Polo, but on land. A difference of Marco Polo and this is. She pulled out a blindfold. The one who is it wears this. Izuku was scared of the blindfold for some reason. And I'm guessing you're all going to be wearing those. Ashido walked and got in between the other two girls. Nope, you wear this. You're going to be it. Or if it makes you feel better and eases your mind, the hunter instead of the hunting. Taking the blindfold, Midoriya looked at it were abbot of worry before looking up and seeing three sets of eyes, possibly four, looking genuinely sincere. I guess I can do it. So, um, get to running, I guess. A head start. Wrapping the blindfold on his head, he began counting down. Four seconds. Mina was half tempted to wait right behind him, but she just ran into the forest greenery abbot. Just hide and waited out for abbot. Then call. Three seconds. See you dived head first into the water. She expects Deku wouldn't go into the water but secretly hopes he does, so she can save him from possible drowning for some romantic situation but went against it. I can call him here, he won't step in. Two seconds. Clinging to a small bit of hope and feeling her bandage, Achako took a small opportunity to think. Maybe. She taught. Maybe I can get him alone if I coax him here. One second. Hagakir threw her clothes into a nearby bush. Her invisibility was her golden ticket. May the best woman win. Izuku mentally prepared himself as he took the first step. Time is up, here I come. And he was then met with a small murmur of voices calling him in different directions. Why is it that even with him being the hunter in this situation, he still felt like he was the one hunted? At the dorms, Jiru rubbed her eyes as she woke up from her nap to try and find her green-haired male sleep in beauty. It took some time, but she finally convinced herself to wake him up and be honest with him this time. It wasn't until she turned the corner she saw something they made her stomach turn abbot. Competition. Oh great. Kayuka thought as she took a step forward and put some force into the thud to get the attention of the new girl who waited in front of Izuku's dorm door. What brings you here this late? Turning her head, she looked towards Jiru with a bit of a glare but steadied herself. Oh, nothing. Just, waiting to speak to someone. Have you seen him? Of all people, I suggest you stay out of his business. If you don't, well. Jiru pointed her jacks. This time actually having a bit of a serious tone to her words. I cannot confirm your safety. The girl let out a small chuckle. I think I like my odds. Walking away, she bumped Kayuka into the wall with a slight hip check. I'll earn his love, and you can't stop me. Jiru let out a small sound similar to a growl. You're never going to get the chance. Looking back one more time, she shook her finger. I'll see you some other time, earphone jack. And with that, she walked off, leaving a pissed off Jiru in her wake. A small wave of fear traveled down the back of the rock star as she looked inside the empty room of her favorite green midnight snack and secret lover. Shit, Jiru thought as she gritted her teeth. That backstabbing brunette beach must have took him in the night, and the blue bimbo must have covered for her. 
trying her hardest not to slam the door in a fit of rage. She trailed after Nejire, in hopes to throttle her neck for answers, but bumped face first into something else. Someone else. Someone who was particularly well endowed in the chest area compared to her little bug bites. Momo looked down at her purple-haired friend with a bit of feigned worriedness mixed with actual worriedness. Jiru, sorry about that. Helping Kayuka up. Momo dusted her friend off before looking up in the direction she came from. Kayuka took a small bow. Thanks, Momo. Sorry about the little mishap. She looked around, trying not to get sidetracked. Hey, you haven't seen Hado pass by, have you? That cerulean cunt is gonna die I said that out loud, didn't I? Ye Arazu had a small tick forming as she forced a smile. And no, I haven't seen her. By any chance, what is it that you were doing in this area of the dorms? She still held the fake smile as she hoped for the best but was ready for the worst. Kayuka could practically hear the tension in the hallway, but tried to play it off. Oh, just looking for my missing guitar pick is all. I found it outside Bakugu's room. I'll be heading back to my room now. Walking away Abbott, a thought passed her mind. Wait, why are you here? Oh no. Momo could only think as she needed to come up with a plan. Well, I just wanted to tell everyone I was back from internships. That's all. I already told the girls and was. Looking for you, that's it. And what was that about Najire? <sighs> Jiru did not let a word pass her lips as she found herself between a wall and a soft thing. She stole my pick. I'm trying to get it back. Oh, in that case, she ran that way. Pointing to the kitchen, Momo had an odd smile on her face. Kinda strange. You said you're looking for your lost pick, but you say Hado has it? Kayuka, you're fumbling your excuses, as if you're trying to hide something. Tell me. She grabbed her petite friend and pushed her against the wall, creating a small nail on her nail. Did you lose it in my boyfriend's room? Jiru was at first caught off guard before she let out a small chuckle. Boyfriend. Honey, you may be built like a budding prostitute, but that is not going to help you get him. Let me tell you, that there is my man. After all, I've been getting my greens every night if you know what I mean. Once I took his little one and done prize, I've been going back for a snack every night. Reveling in her small victory, she had a proud smirk on her face. Momo made more nails appear and gently tapped them across her rival's face. Oh, so my beanstalk has been getting his sap drained by a toxic hussy. Let me tell you something, Jiji. Momo brought herself closer to Jiru's ear. You may have tempered the blade first and have been spit shining the sword since then, but I've put it in the proper sheath. Don't be surprised, but I'm sure you tasted a little bit of me on there. And with that, Momo dropped Jiru. Kayuka let out an odd chuckle. No wonder it tasted fishy that one time. And I don't mean strangely tasting. She felt a kick in her side. Gah, struck a nerve, I see. Momo looked down at her once friend now turned free to me. To ch. Listen, Jiru, I still like you as a friend, so I'll give you this one chance. Stand down, and I'll still consider making you my main bridesmaid at my and Izuku's wedding. Get up. And the day after we graduate from Yue, I might make it look like you were paying a homage to that Kurt Cobain guy from the Quirkless era. Kayuka wrapped her jacks around Momo's neck and slightly strangled her as she got up. Guess I know my real competition. Rich girl, you may think you're all high and mighty with a figure like that and money in stacks. But once he sees you're as impressive as wet cardboard, Izuku will be mine and mine alone. She let go of Momo's neck. I got some makeup that should cover those marks. You're still my friend, but keep in mind, I'm not gonna surrender. And with that, she almost dragged the taller woman to her room to fix her up. I'm guessing you don't have Midoriya with you. Ye Arazu held her neck as she followed. No, I bet he is with All Might for night training. I hope. Both of them thought as the door to Jiru's room closed behind them. Back at Omega, Izuku was having a bit of sensory overload as he heard four voices calling for him from different directions. With each time he heard one, he found himself walking into a random bush or a tree trunk and even into a mud puddle. At least he prayed it was mud. Getting Abbott annoyed, he was one second away from lifting the blindfold up. But being a good sport, he kept it down. Guys, come on, ease up Abbott. Aren't you guys supposed to be trying to call me over to yo he tripped, as he found himself falling into a pond. Sorry about that, Kiro. I guess I led you into a bad area. Come on, you're close to catching me, just keep following me. Asui trudged back, leading him more with the sound of her voice. Having no choice, Izuku followed. Asui, this is getting Abbott tea to heart. I told you to call me Tsu, Midoriya. Hiding herself in the water Abbott, she knew that even if he couldn't see it, she had a small blush on her face as she secretly liked how he kept forgetting. You're nowhere close to catching me though, Kiro. Best to just give up and finally locating the origin of her voice. Izuku activated full cowling and shot towards Asui, grabbing her firmly. Haha, I got you, Asui. He smiled as he enjoyed his minor victory. Wait, I feel something. Soft. Valish. His smile was then replaced with dread as the color left his face. Oh no, Midoriya. Not to ruin your victory, but you're getting kinda handsy. Asui tried to stifle a moan. 
and instead let out a small rivet as she looked down at the scarred hands pressing into her froggy fun bags. Her back pressed against the pond bank as the toned figure of a man in wet clothes was above her. Had a third party seen this from the right angle, the wrong assumption would cross their mind. Izuku shot back, his mind wanting him to strangle himself for the possible sexual harassment that could follow this. I am so so r r y a s u y i m a n t s u y u i d i d n t m e a n t o d o t h a t p l e a s e d o n t t e l l t h e t a c h e r s a b o u t t h i s. I Izuku could only shout out a run on sentence as he feared the worst, getting kicked out of UA, failing his sensei, and what his mom would think. If the blindfold wasn't blocking his tears, there was a big chance Asui would be sent into the next town over due to the sheer tear power. Midoriya. Asui tried to stop him. Midoriya. Still nothing. Midoriya. Calm down, Kiro. She slapped him with her tongue to get him to stop crying. It's okay. You didn't see where you were going. You relied on hearing and rushed. It's okay. It's not like. I didn't enjoy it. Rubbing the wound, Izuku slowed his tears. Ibutsu. I grabbed you inappropriately. That's no way a hero should touch a woman without even a bit of their consent. Yeah, but she got closer, much to his unawareness. Heroes sometimes do things on accident. And as long as it doesn't cause pain, Kiro, it's okay. Sure you should never do that to someone out in the open like the streets. You would definitely be a villain, but accidents happen and I forgive you. The tears finally stopped as Midoriya wiped his nose. Really, unknown to the both of them. A set of eyes similar to a raccoon's watched, alerted by the screams. Yeah, so you looked down silently. Midoriya, yeah, I the frog girl was interrupted by the loud sound of a splat and mud droplets hitting her, coming from a large glob of it hitting Izuku's cheek. Hey, Greeny, the game is still going on. Using her acid, Mina land skated away, calling out for Midoriya as she escaped at an oddly fast pace. Shoot, Izuku mentally kicked himself. Sorry, Asui, um, thank you for forgiving me. Jumping out, he ran towards the sounds of his voice being called, leaving a shaking Tsuyu still in the pond. The shaking, however, was not from fear or sadness, but anger. Anger towards her pink-skinned friend for ruining her moment, the perfect moment she believed, as she jumped out and silently followed but getting herself lost due to their speed. She wasn't going to let her mate slip away. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
each movement just making her legs squeeze harder. Ashido moved her hand down to his pant line to attempt to pull them down. Oh, really? Well today's lesson was actually sec ed. Don't worry, my acid on the inside is diluted enough to make things slide easy. She moved her mouth closer to his ear. I come pre-lubed. Midoriya had had it. It might have been he was used to it after doing it with Momo. But he felt a burning sensation as he gripped Mina's waist firmer, causing Mina to let go as she believed she was going to get it finally. Her legs easing up as well. Mina. His breath gone heavy. That's it, Izukun. A little bit more, and you can have all the fun you want with my pink peach. Feeling skin, she moved her hand closer and closer to the firmness she felt against her rear. It was going great. Until, Deku, I'm over here. A scream, a much too familiar scream, rang through the nearby forest as it almost snapped Izuku out of his day. That, that sounds like. Izuku's mind clicked once again. Achako, pushing Mina off with an audible yelp from the pink girl. He got up and began running, his mind trying to force what was going on fast, leaving a recovering Mina behind. Coughing, Mina barely had a chance to look at the blur before it left. She pounded the ground, angry she didn't get her pounding. You're a rocka. Girl, you're on thin ice the moment I see you, you gravity gooch. She tried her hardest to run after the blur, but for some reason, she was unable to keep up and found herself lost in his dust. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
You're a strong person with an even stronger heart. Even if. She lifted his shirt up to look at the scars on his body, not his muscles. Even if you're scarred up. Izuku looked down at her. Achako. Even if. Her hair blocked her eyes as she moved her uniform to show the bare skin of her chest. As there were small scars dotted all over it from the glass shards. They were not as noticeable as the face one, but were once you pointed them out. You're like me. Izuku could only stare at his friend. Was this a message, or a statement of showing him they're more alike than they know? Achako. Midoriya got closer. He was about to put his arms around her as their lips were mere inches away from each other. Aotchh. You two, are you two about to? They looked away from each other towards the owner of the screams but saw nothing. Well, not nothing. There was a floating school uniform there, after all. They saw it begin to run away. And knowing what could happen, Izuku ran after it, leaving a silent Yuraka behind him in the open. She held her top, watching Izuku run away as she looked down. However, unlike the other two, she didn't feel anger, but happiness. Izuku, you think I'm beautiful? She wiped her face as she let out a normal laugh. Putting her top back on, she picked up Izuku's shirt and went after him. She knew, she knew she is not going to give up now, not this time. Izuku, I love you, and I'm not stopping. She smacked her face as she put on his shirt over her own. I'm not stopping until I can tell you face to face, once and for all. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
getting Abbott worried. Midoriya felt something warm and wet wrap around the tip of his shaft, but when he looked down, the tip was completely gone, yet he could still feel it. Pulling back, Hagakir tried to stifle a nervous laugh. W well, was it cool? Um, that's not the end. Just please don't be scared. Getting back to work, she slowly made her way down more and on the shaft, having trouble midway through to a not strong gag reflex. T Toro, if it's too much for you, you can ease up, you know. Izuku couldn't see, but he could feel her. He could feel her struggles as worriedness flooded him. He got a small bite in response, causing him to shut up. G got it. Reaching under her bed, she got an idea and put on some old gloves from a previous costume as she forced herself to slam her head all the way down to the base, and then, no movements. All Izuku could feel was his entire member being wet and warm, and it all being gone thanks to the invisible woman, but he couldn't feel her move a muscle. T.T. Toru. She could not respond, more in shock that she was able to force it down, but she could still feel his eyes on her. Strange, I feel like he can. See me. Bringing up her hands, she made two shaky peace signs being able to be seen thanks to the gloves, which gave Izuku the relief he needed knowing she was alive. Finally getting back to work, she bobbed her head, making the image of Izuku's member appear and disappear from her mouth. Midoriya fell backwards on the bed as she did her trick, the wave of emotions setting in as he couldn't believe what was going on, nor how good it felt. It wasn't long until he felt something bubbling up in him. Toru, something is. He out his hand on her head, he thought. T. Toru. Hagakir had to make a quick choice, and decided that since she was already this far, may as well go for it as she let go of most of his pee, pee The head still in her mouth as she felt a wave of something thick yet smooth fill her mouth and run down her throat. She had to pull back to gag as it was a bit too much for her, even if she strangely enjoyed the taste. Swallowing the last bit of it, she let out a few gasps as she found herself in a small puddle. Izuku. That was great. No words came from him, however, as he was still processing what was going on. This one night had felt like an eternity to him with all that had gone on. It wasn't until he felt a heat near him that he snapped out of it. He saw something glistening above him member, and then felt a hand grab it. Oh no, I'm sorry, Midoriya. Hagakir lowered herself more and more near his member, the glistening an obvious sign of it. But I, I really need this. In one quick movement, she inserted most of his hard piece into her, but was stopped by something which made both of them freeze in place. Toru moved up a small amount, and slammed past the barrier that made her go from girl to woman, a red liquid leaving the hole where Izuku's rod was disappearing and all he heard were faint crying noises after that. Toru, you're hurt. He tried grabbing for her but felt a gentle gloved hand grab his. And no, I'm okay. It just hurt for Abbott, that's all. I made you feel good. Now please, let me make both of us feel even better. Slowly, she began to move herself on his piece, trying her hardest to not mess it up or go too hard on him as she was very inexperienced in this. Is it? Okay. Am I? Doing it right. He couldn't let out much words as the feeling felt different. Not as hungrily it felt as in his dreams or as forceful as Momo. It felt like Toru's insecurities were showing up even in her movements. She may be bubbly on the outside, but on the inside, she was scared. It feels. Great, Toru. A feeling of nervousness still hit her, but she was finally losing it the longer she spent with him. I'm glad to hear that. She found herself falling forward onto him. Haha, my legs got tired. Sorry. Izuku lifted Toru off of his member, much to her sadness as she felt herself get pulled and bent forward over her own bed. Ape. Izuku, what are you doing? I, um, saw this in a video with a person that looked like an all-might impersonator and a woman. I think he did this. Feeling around and guiding his member, he found the place he was looking for as he re-entered the invisible girl, his pee, pee disappearing into her honey pot once again. Can I do it like this? Waiting for a response, he got a thumbs up from a floating glove. Okay. He began to move once again. Unknown to both of them thanks to the sounds of flesh hitting flesh, the door's lock began to shake and jiggle. Hagakir was in ecstasy. As she bit down onto her blankets, for once in her life, she felt something other than being see-through. Even if she wanted to go all the way, she knew she wasn't ready for the outcome of what was to come, nor putting him though it as well. Midoriya, please, I have one request. Finish on my back, okay. I want to feel, seen. Hearing this, Izuku nodded his head as the blush got big. Why yes, Toru. His thrusts got faster and more needing as the feeling kept bubbling up. I can feel it. T. Toru, pulling back. He grabbed his member and slapped it between her rear cheeks and sandwiched it between them as he thrust the juices from her snatch making a nice lubricant as he let out one final scream. T. Toru, streams of the white nectar came from the tip and landed on her back, giving it small coats of white as he breathed heavy. Now he could see where she was instead of just feeling it. Hagakure, meanwhile, only smiled, at peace with what she did. Midoriya, that was great. She turned around. Izuku, I am going to die, painfully. 
The couple looked towards the origin of the voices, their faces losing all color as they saw something that made their lives flash before their eyes. I knew I heard something. The suction sounds was a dead giveaway. Jiru's eyes were covered by her hair as her jacks moved like snakes and pointed themselves at Toru. Momo put her hand on her ally's shoulder. Now now, Jiru, I want first crack at the girl. She then made a baseball bat come out her shoulder. You hold her, I go for the home run. And then we get our reward. Don't worry, my love, Jiru and I will clean you up once we're done. She licked her lips, the image of a already naked cinnamon roll in front of her making her feel hot and bothered. That, and the adrenaline rush. The door once again locked behind them. Oh, the predicament he was in now. Izuku felt all BLD leave his body as he went ghost white, hair and all. Standing in the middle of the doorway were two women, one of which Izuku knew in the biblical sense. Jiru, Yeirazu, I I know this looks bad. And I Momo hummed a tune as she and Kaiuka fully entered the room, locked the door behind them. Oh, Izuku, you need to know better than not sticking your private part in a place as unfit as that. Don't worry, I will make you better. Using her jacks, Kaiuka pinned them into Toru's shoulders and sent her falling back onto the ground. You got a lot of nerve, girl, trying to take our man. Izuku was dumbfounded at that statement. WW wait, our man. Oh, Midoriya. Momo put her hand on the shocked boy's shoulder. You don't know, but Jiru and I have dedicated most of our free time to you. She had a twisted smile as she leaned in to give a lick to Izuku's cheek from his chin to his ear, making sure Jiru was looking at her as she gave a small bite to it. You should know, you're her favorite midnight snack. Poor girl's jaw hurts in the morning after every trip. Jiru, on the other hand, had a huge blush as she saw her cover was blown within that chance. Much like how she blown Izuku. I I I mean, uh. She looked down in a way, her heart beating 100 beats per minute. You are a good source of protein. Midoriya looked down in shock as everything clicked. Wait, that explains the past few weeks. Jiru, you, you did that to me. Seeing she had no chance other than this one, Toru easily managed to push the stunned Jiru off her and got face to face with Momo as Izuku was lost in thought, deaf to the world. Oh yeah, Miss Thunder Tits. I'll have you know I technically won since I got him to do it willingly with me, unlike both of you. If my memory serves. She pointed to Jiru. You borderline raped the lad. She pointed to Yeirazu. And you had to trick him by saying your Araka was using him. I saw your diary. I, however, brought him to my room while he was conscious and rode that rod until he stopped himself. By that logic, Izuku is mine alone now. Now do me a favor and get out of here, you cow. Yeirazu lost her smile. Grabbed Toru and pinned her against the wall. Don't speak to me like that ever again, okay? Out of the corner of her eye, she saw Izuku going for the door. Quickie, she made a metal pole come out of the back of her neck to stop him. Oh, Izuku, you're not going anywhere. She let go of Toru to wrap her arms around his neck from behind. I haven't been getting much greens lately. Don't I get a say in this? Izuku struggled to get out, unable to activate his quirk out of fear. Momo smirked. Not a chance. You see, now that you know the truth, we can't risk you going out and telling the world. Listen, Green Bean, I was trying to be nice, even going as far as playing the little housewife role if it took that to be your woman. My plan was to break you, and I fully intend to. Mother taught me the tricks to keep a man the day I left home to be here. I'm sure I can find a workaround to make you, oh I don't know, disappear for Abbott, long enough for me to be done with school. Momo's eyes looked down and locked onto his nether region. You'll learn then that I'm the only one who gets to use TH Momo stopped as she started gagging and holding her neck, Izuku looking back in shock as she saw Momo struggling to pull something off her neck, but to him, it looked like she was choking. You're psycho, girl. Momo was thrown down as she was left on the floor, gasping for breath. Toru had managed to catch the girl off guard long enough. You can't just do that to Izuku. Izuku let out a sigh of relief as he slumped against the wall. Toru, thank why Toru kicked Momo right in the melons, looking down upon her, not seen but felt. That plan would be a failure. Hara and fear is in the lad again. You really think no one would look for him? Search parties, investigators, missing people cases. Not to mention our eye candy is all buddy-buddy with countless teachers and the guys. You really don't think they'd ask us anything. All it takes is a person with a lie detector quirk to rat you out. Your money can't save you when you're in the slammer. Toru continues kicked her, ramping up the force more and more, bit by bit, as she let out a boisterous laugh. Izuku couldn't handle it. Even if he was intimate just now with one and was before with the other, even if she did something vile to him, this wasn't justice, it was torture. Within a quick movement, he grabbed Toru and threw her on the bed to get her off Momo. Toru, that was going too far. A sinister laugh came from the depression on the bed. Greeny, I didn't know you liked it rough. Izuku shook as he seen the girl that practically lulled him to do it acted just as if what she was doing to Momo didn't happen. 
As Izuku went on his tirade of saying both of them were acting unfitting of heroes, he was too busy to notice Momo slowly rising up as she wiped some BLD from her lip as she grabbed her earlier maid bat and was about to reenact a scene from an old quirkless era show about zombie and bring it down on the Invisigirl on the bed. See you in the ER, you invisible skank. Momo slammed the bat down, but Izuku in his fear and quick range was able to block the hit, only to get it smacked against his head. The bat snapping in the process as Izuku laid unconscious on the bed. I-Z-U-K-U. Jiru was the first to run up, pushing both girls that loomed over him, crying their eyes out to check him. She laid her head against his chest and checked his pulse, letting it a happy sigh with a sob. He's alive. I wouldn't know what I would do if I lost him. I know what I would do. Momo got down as she gently played with the hair of the passed out boy. I would have turned this entire school into the next Grand Canyon with what I would make. A soft smile crossed her lips as she lovingly looked at Izuku's unconscious body. Jiru kept her head on his chest. That's an understatement. Why stop at a school? This entire city would feel my anger. Toru rested on her bed as she looked at Izuku. You think only us would feel destroyed. This what would happen if word got out he died. The world would be in chaos with what the other girls would cause. I wouldn't be surprised if girls around the entire school would snap if they lost muscles here. Acid melting away everything. Things being sent to space. Never return. Countless drownings. People accidentally die. All of them looked at each other until they snapped out of their delirium. Momo looked at herself in the mirror. I need to hide this. She begrudgingly ran to her room, doing whatever she could to hide the bumps and cover up wounds. If she went to recovery girl, surely questions would arise. Toru had to swallow her pride as she she looked around her now kinda dirty room. I'll clean this up. Jiru, as much as I hate this, get Izuku to your room. We'll discuss things later. Jiru, knowing her room was close by just nodded and took him. Midoriya, listening to her frenemy, she took Izuku to her room and propped him in a chair she had, using a vast amount of belts to hold him in the meantime. Some time later, she sent a text to both Momo and Toru, and within the hour, the three of them sat in front of their twisted source of their purpose in life. 130 Izuku woke up bound by his hands, legs and body to a chair. His mouth left open and clear as he yelled for help. Izuku Midoriya, we ask you quiet down for Abbott. The darkness of the room and the eerie tone of the voice only made him struggle more. Momo, I know it hurts, but do it. Yeirazu bit her tongue as she got close and slapped Izuku to shut him up and focus. I'm sorry. She held back tears. Luckily, it did shut him up in the meantime. Toru hit the light. With the lights turned on, Izuku saw he was in Jiru's room, facing three girls on the verge of tears as they looked at him. And an unsettling amounts of bite marks the feeling of drool, as if someone licked him in different places, along his body. Girls, please, let me go. Jiru walked up. Not yet. We will, but. Not yet. Izuku, we need to be honest with you. Momo kneeled in front of him, resting her hands and chin on his leg. At least they were gracious enough to get some All Might print underpants for him. We've been thinking about it for the past three hours. Toru sighed. On the count of three. One, two. We love you, Izuku Midoriya. Each one went up to give a kiss to his cheek or lips, which is why we can't let you know what we did. Momo went to the door and slightly opened it. You can come in now. Opening the door, she made way for a girl with pink hair to come in with a contraption in hand. Hatsum, Yeyurazu. The pink-haired girl didn't even bother looking her way as she made her way to Izuku. Hi, muscles. Izuku had tears rolling down his face. Mei, you too. Mei tried her best to not look at him, only to catch the mirror and still be able to. Why yeah, listen, I'm sorry for this, but Momo stroke a deal with me. She offered to fund my inventions when we leave this place, and she said I can have weekends with you, too. Mei, please. You're talking Kra he was cut off as a pair of goggles was put onto his head as they turned on and he stopped moving. Jiru looked at him as she sighed. Thanks, Mei. So, you too. Mei shifted her body. Yeah, ever since the sports festival, he showed genuine interest in something I enjoyed. Even if most of my intentions turn out to be total failures and literally blow up in my face, he comes to me for his equipment. Call it sappy. But I want to build a relationship with him, and maybe. A few babies. Momo had to fight her urge to smash her head in. You're not gonna, you know, budge in more often. No, May said, as she watched the machine wipe his memories of what happened prior. I could never have the chance. You're all in his class. I'm out there trapped in the studio doing work. What I'm doing could never give me the chance to try and be honest with him. Making a deal with you was my best bet. Toru poked the machine, so he won't remember anything. Not even what we did. Yes, the past eight hours will be a total blur to him. He won't even remember your little game you all pulled. There is a 95% he'll be blissfully unaware. May said as she sat on the bed and looked as her heart hurt. Momo squinted at May. 95. The other 5% being. He blows up. BB but only a little. At most he would have abit more scars. Maybe some burns. She tried to put her hands up to block any hits that would come her way. 
The girls contemplated. Sure, they'll still love Izuku whether he looked the same or disfigured, but it would be hard to explain to everyone else. We'll take that risk, they said in almost perfect unison. Waiting in bated breath, they watched as the machine powered down. The task completed as Mei took it off and Izuku fell asleep with a snore. See, looks like all well that ends with the machine exploded, leaving her hands covered in soot as smoke flew up from them. Welp, Toru put her head in her hand. Let's just get him to his room before I choke this girl out. Lifting him up, they all struggled Abbott to take him to his room, mostly because they would attempt to try and lead the group to one of theirs. Soon, they made it and rested him on his bed and covered him up, looking as if he was sleeping soundly. As vultures would circle their prey, they too loomed over the sleeping man for a second and walked out the room, not bothering to even speak to each other. Now knowing each other didn't really have limits when it came to snagging the prize. The three class one of girls left each other in a dead silence as May made her way to her dorm. A grin plastered on her face as her deception worked like a charm. Come morning, things will be fun. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
When did you get the time to meet up with her, especially since you're always working? A voice from the crowd whispered to another something about them thinking Izuku was dating the tall one from 1A. Maybe they were wrong and they just hanged out with each other a lot. Only Jiru heard this as she wanted to go over there and wring his neck but didn't. Izuku just had a smile, albeit a confused one. Oh, I've been dating her for a few weeks actually. Yeah, but things are kinda fuzzy. They put her hand on his. Oh, sweetie, don't you remember? It was when you came to me a burr fixing your equipment. You came to me when I was in the middle of another baby and an explosion happened. Both of us got sent off and I landed on you. Our eyes meeting as I felt your strong chest. Oh right, I guess it happened so fast I sort of forgotten some of it. Izuku chuckled Abbott. Mina went around and put her hand on May's shoulder. Well, you did good, girl. He's woo the catch. She made small bit of acid leaked from her hand. Sorry, sorry. I've been using my quirk a lot more than normal lately, sometimes it leaks. Hatsum looked at her outfit. The acid only messing up her clothes and not reaching her skin. She stared at the other pink freak and gave a smile, her golden eyes meeting Mina's own golden ones. Don't worry, it happens. The bell rang loud, giving the students the cue was free time. Izuku got up as he stretched. Well, dear, want me to walk you to the office? Maybe they got a spare uniform for you. May smiled as she hugged him, getting a hug in return. Oh, don't worry, dear, I've got a few because of my work. I should have a spare in my locker actually. You be good now, okay? She gave him a gentle peck on his lips, causing him to blush. Be back soon. She made him let go as she was heartbroken to not be against his chest anymore and walked off for the locker room. A small sway in her hips as she took her steps, making sure Izuku saw it as a blush crept onto his face. Toru looked around as she didn't need to smile. If she could be seen, she would have the most angry face imaginable. Yeah, I think you should check on her, Mina, just to make sure you didn't hurt her on accident still. I think we should I'll, I'll go. For moral support, Izuku smiled and bowed to them. That's so nice of you all. I'm glad you all care for her so much. Of course, she forced a smile and put her hand on his shoulder. She's your girlfriend and means a lot to you. So she's our friend in a way. Hey, <laughs> hey. Well, great. I'm gonna head to the office too. Uh, talk with All Might for tomorrow's test. Midoriya took his tray and maze to where Ray belonged and made his way to the offices, leaving the girls to follow the golden-eyed hussy to the lockers. In the lockers, Jiru slammed the May against the wall, her fists holding onto the straps of May's tank top. What's deal, Hatsum? Why is muscles all gaga over you? Achako put her entire hand on Jiru's shoulder, causing her to float. Now back up. What do you mean you had a deal with her? Care to explain, Miss Washboard? Momo grabbed the flying girl and tied her down with a rope she made. Hey now, back off her. May dusted herself off as she went to get HSR new vest. Yeah, especially since the cow and the Invisibeach were in on it too. I'll tell you all, don't worry. They had a sinister smile as she told the entire story of her making fake memories. Momo's offer and the like. I know because of this I'm not getting the funding. But oh well. It doesn't matter if I get 4 million or just 4 from someone or my own pockets. Izuku is the real prize for me. The girls advanced on her as she pulled out her phone and gave Izuku a call as it rang. Now now, settle down. You wouldn't want him hearing you hurt me outside of training. Imagine, what would happen if he did? He would see you all as enemies. Izuku picked up the phone, as May said it to speaker. Hey, May, what's up? May chuckled Abbott. I'm done changing. Dear, the girls checked up on me and they're doing great, aren't they? The girls begrudgingly agreed and gave fake enthusiasm. Care to meet me up outside the lockers? Sure, I'll be there in Abbott. Be back soon. He hung up the phone, leaving everyone wanting to kill the pink-haired beach and be vocal about it. Achako released Jiru as she fell within small O. She went up and punched the wall near May's head, but her not even flinching. You are so dead. And as for you three, don't think you're safe from me either. The second we get the chance, your head will be on a pike. Within the minute, Izuku was at the door as he knocked. Hey, uh, you still in there? May smiled and gave an enthusiastic yell. Be right out to see you. She looked at the group, and he's soon going to be right in me. She walked and opened the door as the girls followed, running to Izuku as she hugged him and felt his arms around her waist. Giving a quirk lurk over to the group, May gave an evil smile as she lowered her hands, pushing Izuku's down and grabbing onto them to slam them right against her ass and told him to squeeze. Something in him almost forced him to do it as he gave them a strong grab, even though he looked more red than green at the moment. She grabbed his hand and walked off with him as he was stuttering like crazy. When they were out of earshot, it was Tsuyu this time who punched a wall, t this time going right through the drywall. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
you'll be paired into groups of four too. Do whatever you want. To be honest, the lesson plan has been kinda muddled lately. As long as you're training, that's all that matters, and I better see true work out there. And with that, he got into his sleeping bag and slept on the floor. Izuku packed up his things and chatted with Ida for Abbott as he got a text from May, seeming to ask him out on a date as he smiled. I'll see you later, okay. Take care. He walked off and out as the girls stayed to do some extra studying pretty much kicking out everyone, especially the little pervert and even Aizawa. The girls pushed the desks into a sort of O shape as they were going to have a discussion. They could already figure out what the situation they were discussing was. Momo started off. Okay, so spill. Who is going to take Izuku? The FC King rules our dear teacher said only groups of four. And frankly Izuku can't be with us all. I say I take Izuku and just grab two of the guys. Mina slammed the table. As if. Listen, you three whores had a turn. You all have had free time with him. So, she looked at both Tsuyu and Achako as they ganged up. It's our turn. Jiru stabbed her jacks into Mina's sides, getting a yipe of pain out of her. You're just doing that to get him. What are you going to do? Tsuyu used her tongue to smack Jiru and accidentally Toru, to which she apologized quickly for, but not to Jiru. Simple, Kiro. We have this still. She reached into her backpack and pulled out the game journal. As far as I'm concerned, we still can do this. If I'm correct, you set the rules, Momo, so we are going to use them until we get our share. Toru rubbed her cheek. That journal is bullshit. I technically won so just burn that. Not anymore, Toru. With what May did. You're all back to square one too. How about this? First come, first serve. It's like it began all again. Yuraka took the journal and put it in her back. That seems fair. The other three, although hating it, had to agree. A new slate, a new start. They gave their okay. Although they wanted to just call it off and have every woman for herself no matter the cost on the inside. They put the desks back and made their way out back to the dorms. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX